Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Welcome back, listeners. Thank you so much for giving me some of your time today. With me is Ryan Hurd from Caregiver Smart Solutions. This is a product that will allow you to help monitor your loved ones without being as intrusive as intrusive as maybe a ring camera or other camera systems. So thanks for joining me, Ryan. Thanks, Jennifer. I really appreciate you having me on the Fading Memories podcast. I'm so excited to be here. Awesome. So give us your backstory, how this kind of came to be. It seems like <laughs> those of us that are caregivers seem to be creating the solutions that we all need, which is good because you we're all creating something we all need. Yeah, yeah, and, and you're right. I, I probably have the same journey as most of the people do. Um, I've been in technology for 30 years. Uh, I've always been doing some kind of smart home, IoT kind of a thing. Uh, matter of fact, I wrote the book on it called Join the Smart Home Revolution. And, uh, you know, life was great. I'm known as Ryan Hurd, the smart guy. I, <laughs> I do a lot of presentations on technology and how the different age groups uh, use technology. A matter of fact, when I was born, there was this technology. It was called a phone, but this <laughs> phone was actually bolted to the wall and had a wire coming from it, right? And if you yep. wanted a little bit of, uh, you know, quietness, you had to go down to this store called Radio Shack and you bought a longer wire. Yeah, I'm sure a bunch of people are going to remember that, but oh, those were the good old days. But anyway, I digress. Yeah, so, you only had to have one phone per household, not exactly. multiple phones. And a party line, right? Right. Those are well. I'm. I don't remember them. Um. I don't think we had them as much in the West Coast as you guys did. Um. Maybe I don't know. Maybe there was less of us at the time. <laughs> but my my dad worked for AT and T. That's what it was wow. called when he yeah. when he retired. It was Pacific Bell and God knows what else it was between yeah, it, <laughs> then it had and the now. Mama Bells, right? The Mama yep. Bells, and it turned into AT and T, and then Lucid, and then Verizon. We have the old AT&T campus uh, right down the road from us in northern New Jersey. That's where I'm from, if you couldn't tell. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so my father, my father got cancer. And when he comes home from his chemo treatments, I was concerned about him taking this one medication, which was for neuropathy. And then that led from the medication to, did dad get up today? You know, is he moving around? Is he eating? And what I found out, these are called the activities of daily living. But I didn't know that at the time. All I knew was, you know, is dad okay? And of course, like anybody else, what I did was I, I looked for technology and nothing really existed. There was two things. There was either I fall and I can't get up or a camera. So I put the camera in and that lasted, you know, 10 to 15 seconds. And then a dish towel went right over it. So that's not working. And again, because I've always done this smart home stuff, I figured I'd, I'd get something, put it in, and crisis, you know, avert it. And nothing was was providing me with what I needed. I, I didn't, dad needed, didn't need a smart thermostat. He didn't need a, a smart doorbell or a smart, you know, door lock. I needed some information. So I, I basically came up with this thing and I duct taped it together and I used it and it was helping me. And then I did it for my grandmother. Then I started talking about it and everybody was telling me how they needed this. It, it was really a big deal to be that fly on the wall. So hence, Caregiver Smart Solutions, uh, which is a tool to help you monitor your loved one as they age in place. And that's because caregiving is, is chaotic. It's stressful. And all you want is a little more peace of mind and time back in your life. So that's where we came from. I love the I love the comment how your dad threw the dish towel over your 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 uh... and then a doggy toy. That was the next thing. Oh god, the doggy <laughs> toy. That cracks me up even funnier. And then you listed all of those smart home devices, all of which we have, including yeah. an air air filter that I spent an extra 30 bucks on. So it was Bluetooth So because my, my husband likes those kind of things. We like our toys. <laughs> well, and he just, um, it's got at night, the lights on it are really super bright and they, they shine down the hall. And even if the bedroom door is open just a few inches so the dog can come right. and go as, as she wants, um, they're too bright. And so I said, I think we're going to start turning that off. 
forgetting that, you know, he's got an app on his phone to control this silly <laughs> little appliance. It's like so silly. And he said it. So it comes on at six in the morning and goes off at 10 o'clock at night. And I'm like, oh, that's helpful. <laughs> Perfect. And that's best of both worlds. Right. And that's that's what I mean. Again, I'm a technologist. So that just means that I'm a technology geek. With that said, the technology I like the most is the kind of stuff that can actually help us as humans and solve a real problem. So like one of my lectures, I talk about technology for living in place and, and how can we use this stuff to make our lives a little better. And I talk about, you know, smart microwaves and they are amazing, but why do we really need them? Well, I don't know about you, but you know, these things, I'm tending to oh. use these uh, <laughs> glasses more and more. Yeah, we all have them. And yep. I don't know about you, but when I go to the grocery store and I get, let's say, frozen peas or corn, you know, I look on the back of that bag and I swear they use like 0.1 size of a font. It's crazy. I can't read them with the best glasses I have. Well, yep, I've been the there too. Generation. Exactly. You know exactly what I'm talking about. The next generation of smart microwaves, you could literally just scan the back of this package, you throw it in the microwave, and you let the microwave do its thing. The microwave will already know its peas, and it has to, let's say, be at 50% power for three minutes, and then turn, and then be at 100% power for two minutes, and then wait, and then go on for 100% for another minute. Awesome. Again, that's how smart technology can actually help us as humans, because I can't see anything anymore. <laughs> my favorite is the labels that are black red font on black backgrounds like this is like insane or like, black on blue that's freaking great isn't it <laughs> yeah it's like i can't read this at all i get out my phone and just magnify because yeah. yeah, i'm God stubborn that way <laughs> i you know i honestly didn't know that there were smart microwaves and you yeah. know if the federal reserve stops messing around with the real estate market I might be able to upgrade my 1988 kitchen to, you know, 2024. <laughs> amazing so I guess I'll be looking for a smart microwave when we do, <laughs> when we finally, uh, you know, get the, get the kitchen done. It's, yeah. it's a very weird kitchen, but it works. It's just, it's just 1988 and it's awkwardly arranged, but yeah, I didn't even know there was a smart microwave. My husband probably was does. was great, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Well, That's when my husband and I started our DJ business. I got I got rid of the Ford Escort that was a clunker and got a my first Honda. I'm now I'm on my third Honda because I keep my cars forever. So yeah, eighty eight was a pretty good year. We were planning our wedding. We got married in eighty nine. Yeah, there you go. It's a pretty good year. Lots of good things that happen. And think think about all the technology it was back. Right, you really didn't have. Let's see, eighty nine. You didn't have cell phones except nope. for rich people, but you had pagers. So mm -hmm. I had a pager. I graduated in 89. I had a pager. And we also had a little more patience back then, right? So when my mother paged me, which was the early text for all of you younger ones out there, <laughs> you know, you had like a 15 minute, you know, free time. And you had a cup holder full of, at that time, dimes, nickels, maybe some quarters. And you would have to go and find what was called a pay phone, right? So you had to find a pay phone somewhere. You rolled up, you had about 15 minutes to call your friend or mom back before they paged you again. And you'd feed this uh, pay phone a couple of dimes or quarters and you call up and, you know, my mother'd be like, where are you? I have no idea. We're hanging out someplace. All right, make sure you're home by 11. Okay, see you later, right? Unlike now where we have no patience and we text somebody and we're like, hey, why don't you get back to me? Well, I just finished reading the text. I got to like, yeah. put it in. <laughs> Sorry, I was recording a podcast. My phone's on Do Not Disturb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so technology tell me can be how, good and bad. Yes, that's true. So yeah. I have... So tell us how... how blah, blah, blah. Let's see. It's Monday, so yes. I, I, I could speak. <laughs> tell us how this solution works. Because we've, sure. we've talked about old technology or non-technology. <laughs> Let's talk about new technology. Well... When you, when you look at caregiver smart solutions, you say, well, what is the problem that you're solving? And simply state it, when your loved one goes home, wherever that home is, and they close that front door, it's a black hole of information, right? You call mom up, how are you doing? You're always going to get, I'm fine. Fine. All you want is to be a fly in the wall. I, I just want to know if dad got up. I just want to know if dad's eating. Did dad take his medication? 
or God forbid, his dad laying on the floor. That's what we are. So what we're doing is we're using tiny non-invasive sensors that are placed discreetly around the home. Actually, a matter of fact, I could show you. Let me, since I'm this whole tech guy, I might as well use my technology. Let's let's see if this works. So that's pulled the core kit, but here we go. All right. Can you see that? Yes, I can. Excellent. So this is the core kit by Caregiver Smart Solutions. And when I say the tiny and non-invasive sensors, what happens is you're going to open this up and you're going to see this tells you what all the sensors are. And here, a card comes with it. You literally scan it. You download the app and you're ready to rock and roll. Here's the sensors. Now, the sensors, can you see this? This is a quarter. The sensors are the size of a quarter. Why is that important? Because nobody wants to feel like they're being spied on, right? These are not cameras, but they're tiny non-invasive sensors that you place discreetly around the house. And what they're doing are things like these are looking at movement. And let's say it's the master bedroom, master bathroom, living room, kitchen, dining room. And these sensors are looking at doors. Maybe it's the front door, or the side door, medicine cabinet, uh, refrigerator. This sensor is looking at temperature and humidity. So it's really important that your loved one takes a shower every couple of days. Or you can also use one of these for the stove. Did mom leave the stove on and then walk out the front door? And then, of course, we have emergency buttons just in case, you know, let's say one's in the bathroom, one's in the bedroom, and maybe one is next to mom's favorite uh, chair in the living room. Just in case. If something happens and she can get to it and press it, great. Now. The beauty of this is it's looking at that person's habits and it sends that information to an app that's on your smart device, your phone, your iPad, whatever. And this is how you can know if, if something's amiss, whether obviously, God forbid, that person is lying on the floor or if something happened and let's say mom went to the refrigerator and she made her breakfast and then she closed it but it didn't really close. You know how the refrigerators make that like dinging, high-pitched dinging sound? Well, that takes you an hour to figure out what's where it's coming from. <laughs> is that me or is something making a noise? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, as you probably don't know yet, as you get older, you know, your hearing tends to go and, and it tends to be the highs and the lows. Well, for whatever reason, the refrigerator manufacturers chose to use this sound that I can hardly hear. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine grandma not being able to hear it. Well, several hours later, she'll notice that the refrigerator is open. And that could be a problem. You know, if you've got deli meat and, and leftovers in there, that could be a problem. So wouldn't it be great to know that if mom left that door open or it didn't close all the way, after like 10 minutes, you got an indication on your phone and you gave mom a call and say, hey, mom, how are you doing? I'm great. Do me a favor. Can you check the refrigerator? I think uh, it might still be open. Crisis averted, right? So that's the kind of things that we're doing uh, for you, giving you more peace of mind. Which is awesome. So how does it, so this is AI learning, correct? Yeah, so we're using the fancy stuff, machine learning and AI. The easiest way to think about it is like this. All of these sensors are data points. And they're looking at that person's habits because what we believe is you're not going to be able to change grandma's habit. You know, if you can get her to where, you know, I fall and I can't get up, great. But a lot of times what we've learned is A, they're not wearing them, B, they're not charging them up, they're shoved in the drawer next to the bed, whatever it is. And, you know, they believe that they're safe in home and they should believe that they're safe at home. But that's where most events happen specifically between the bedroom and the bathroom. So how do we develop something that doesn't require any input from that person? And that's why we went down this path, because regardless of what mom tells you, you know, maybe she had a rough night last night. Maybe she was up and down because, you know, she has urinary tract infection, or maybe there's other issues going on. So here's a way to see those indicators by using today's technology that can get ahead of things. 
That sounds terrific. So it's it's collecting data on movement and basically habits. What happens when you have an anomaly? Anomaly? Oh, for the love of God! <laughs> One of those. <laughs> Still Monday. <laughs> Where you say they sleep in. Right. And do would you get an alert that says, "Hey, wait, something's different." Would yes. you, you know, would you get that false alarm? Okay. Yeah. So, so that, for example, let's say. Let's say dad normally gets up at 6.30 and now it's 7.15. You'll get an alert on your phone that says uh, dad's not up yet. So think of it as yellow. Doesn't necessarily mean that there's a problem, but, you know, just think about it. But now let's say it's 8 o'clock and dad's not up. Well, that's definitely out of the ordinary. So all of a sudden it's going to prompt you, give dad a call. Now, dad might have just been binging on Netflix last night, which is fine. But again... You just want to be the fly on the wall. You just want to know what's going on. That makes sense. So the first alert would be just kind of like a, hey, something's out of the norm. Just right. letting you know. Not necessarily, you know, red alert, got to do something until obviously two hours or an hour and a half later. That makes sense. Exactly. Exactly. So um, now... <laughs> Despite the uh, abundance of rain that we've had in California yeah. this year, we have very, very little humidity. When we have a little bit of humidity, it's horrible. Right. <laughs> it's like, why am I sweating? It's March. It's Bad cold. Hair days. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. I, I'm like, I must have dried my hair funky. Oh no, it's actually, you know, we've got like 15% humidity. Oh my God, I'm right. going to die. So, and then of course, you know, despite again, abundance of rain, you know, we're supposed to take the uh, five minute military showers, which, you know, I try at least every other, when I don't wash my hair, I try to keep it pretty short. Right. Cause you know, I, I'd prefer to at least have that option than, you know, totally running out of water. How does it read the humidity if you've got a somewhat compartmentalized bathroom? Like where would you put the sensor if you, like we have the toilet and the shower are in, they're at the far end of the bathroom. There is a mm -hmm. sliding door we, you, we could close. And then the sinks are on like the other end and yeah. the tub that we don't use is in the middle. So where would you put that kind of sensor knowing that we already don't have very much humidity? <laughs> so the good thing about not having much humidity is once it shows up, it's all over the place. With that said, I would put the temperature humidity sensor closer to the uh, shower. On the flip side, let's say you wanted to monitor the stove. I would put it close to the stove because unlike the shower where we're looking for a rise of temperature and humidity, on the stove, we're looking for a rise of humidity relative to the rest of the house. But there's also other ways of using it. So for example, let's say you're looking at, well, actually, let's see if technology works. Let me see if I can show you. Now, I don't know if I can show you. This is my app, but I'm going to now plug it in over here. Let's see if this works. This is live, so no guarantees. All right. Oh, there we go. There we go. So I am using a green screen, and these are green icons. So <laughs> you can't see them very well, but let's see if we can get my point across. See on the top right-hand side, you see 60. That's showing the outside temperature. And inside, you see 74, and the relative humidity is 30%. That gives you a real quick view of, let's say, if Lake Tahoe, let's say mom was up in Lake Tahoe, and it could be 28 degrees outside. If it's 74 inside, well, you know, everything's fine. You can also set up an indicator that once the outside temperature reaches 32, I want to know, just, just for peace of mind. And inside, if inside, let's say, went to 55, well, I want to know that too, because maybe there's a problem with the heating or air conditioning. And you can also reverse that. So when outside goes above 90 and inside goes above 80, I want to know. Now, it might be a problem or it might not. But again, it's all about being that fly on the wall. And other things. So let's say the refrigerator. Okay. So here you see the refrigerator has been open four times today. And on average, it's nine times. Great. We know grandma's doing fine. But if you really needed to, you can look into it as much as you want. And here you can see the battery's good. Currently it's closed. You know, when was the last time she opened it? So here's where you can look at historically, you know, what has mom been doing? Is she eating enough? And that also goes with, you know, bathroom. 
So think of things like bathroom usage. Uh, right now, you can see that she was in the kitchen two minutes ago and in the dining room. So she's moving around. She hasn't taken a shower yet. She was in the master bedroom 23 minutes ago. So, you know, everything's fine. Everything is green. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming the sensor for the stove works on um, gas or electric. Correct. I am desperately trying to convince the hubby to get um, induction when we oh, are able able to get rid of our 1988 triangular shaped kitchen with its gigantic island. <laughs> One of these days I'll have to take pictures. It's a very strange kitchen. Um, would it work on induction? Because induction doesn't generate much heat or any. Now we're going to take a quick break for an ad. These ads help me continue to bring the show to you for free. When I learned that despite eating as healthy as possible, we can still have undernourished brains. I was frustrated. I also live in a farming community, so I'm aware that our food isn't grown as well as we need. Learning about Neuro Reserves, Relevate, and how it's formulated to fix this problem convinced me to give them a try. Now I know many of you are skeptical, as was I. However, I know it's working because of one simple change. My sweet tooth is gone. I didn't expect that, and it's not something other users have commented on, but here's some truth. My brain always wanted something sweet. Now, fruit usually did the trick, but not always. One bad night's sleep would fire up my sugar cravings so much they were almost impossible to ignore. You ever have your brain screaming for a donut? Well, for me, those days are gone. It's been about six months since I started taking the supplement, and I have no regrets. I believe in my results so much that I'm passing on my 15% discount to you. Try it for two or three months and see if you have a miraculous sweet tooth cure or maybe just better focus and clarity. It's definitely worth a try. Now back to our conversation. The product that you're cooking does, or if you're boiling, let's say water for pasta, that's gonna create humidity. Again. We can look at very, very low levels. And with the AI and machine learning, you look at things over time. So we'd actually literally be able to see um, mom is cooking every day at around five o'clock. You know, so we start anticipating that and we're looking at different things. So let's say, did mom uh, open up the fridge and is she going to the bathroom? Because you know what? We're a closed loop system. Whatever goes in must yeah. come out. So you know, these are all the things we're looking at. And when you're looking at habits, you know, listen, habits are very hard to change. I shouldn't be eating as many cookies as I used to, but <laughs> I'd rather go through the pain of running and eat more cookies. <laughs> I can relate to that. I'm a cyclist and a Peloton fanatic. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm in the same boat. It's like exercise makes me feel better, makes my brain work better, all the positive things. But, but so do cookies. <laughs> nah, cookies don't make my brain they make my brain think it works better but exactly. <laughs> uh, you know so <clears throat> excuse me like i said it's very dry here so uh, there was one other question oh you were talking about the temperature gauge would you yeah. not pair that with a smart thermostat so funny story this has happened to us three times we have a wood burning so a small wood burning stove in the corner of our family room okay. we have a nest thermostat basically right at the entryway to the family room it's it's centrally located right. but it definitely picks up the temperature from the stove definitely prevents yeah, the heat from off. coming on so my husband's sitting outside wood burning stove is going 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 and he's like what is that noise and he turns around and he's like why the hell is the air conditioner running <laughs> because yeah. the our nest thermostat is set up so that if it gets past 80 in the house it, it automatically on. comes on and if it gets below a certain temperature, it also comes on automatically. Part of that is because we've had dogs. Right now we only have one. Um, mm -hmm. But if we're gone all day and, you know, we've had this uh, highly predictable weather lately, <laughs> you know, we don't want the dog overly, like, too hot, which we also, right. you know, know is dangerous. Or I don't, I think she'd be fine if it was fairly cold because, you know, they're pretty well insulated. But still, you know, she's a pampered pooch. We don't want her to freeze. I've suggested that he change the upper temperature to 85 because, you know, 
I like it warm. I don't get the wood burning stove cranking that hot because that's a lot right. of wood. <laughs> but would you not pair these sensors with something that also would say, hey, something's going funky, you know, like automatically turn on the AC unless obviously the power is out. Right. Um, that just well, seems could. like a good. Okay. One of the part, one <clears throat> problem with technology is technology doesn't understand context. So, for example, your Nest thermostat, right? So, next ter next thermostat is binary. Is it too hot? Is it too cold? It doesn't understand the complexity of having the stove or the wood burning stove on or whatnot. It just says, is it hot or is it cold? So that's the biggest problem with technology. Now, from our standpoint, yes, you know, you could absolutely put all the technology. It could be an S thermostat. It could be a, a ring doorbell. It could be, you know, whatever. And that's great. But for the most part, depending on the age group, my let's say my 97 year old grandmother, she's technologically adverse. She doesn't want the smart technology. She believes that it's spying on you. Can you believe that? I don't know where she <laughs> ever got that idea from. But anyway, if it makes sense, yes. Here is another way of knowing whether or not it's working. Because if you, let's say, grandma's in Lake Tahoe and it's 25 degrees out and it's 50 degrees inside, it might be a thermostat issue. Maybe the thermostat's batteries are dead, even if it's smart. Maybe there's an issue with the actual HVAC. Who knows? But again, this is that fly in the wall that then indicates to you to give mom a call and you call mom up and say, how are you doing? And you get the, I'm fine. Hey, I got a question for you. Why is it 50 degrees in the house? Oh, that stupid thing has been broken for weeks. <laughs> Ma, can, can I get somebody to take a look at it for you? Like, right? So it's, it's all about encouraging those conversations and getting ahead of problems. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, because if it was 50 degrees in my house, I'd be dead. <laughs> I do not <laughs> like it cold. My office is downstairs. It gets very chilly. I have a space heater and an a electric radiant heater. Right. The space heater keeps the floor from getting super cold. It just kicks on every you know few minutes for you know a minute or so. Right. But in the hallway, it is almost always 67 degrees, which is way too cold for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe That's if you keep moving I... down south, you get warmer and warmer, right? I don't know about this year, but the, supposedly, but it's nice yeah. up here. I like living in the Sierra foothills. So do you have, so you're using this with your grandmother and your mom? Yeah, we're actually, uh, we are in market. We are worldwide. We've got products in Japan and Canada, across the UA, uh, UK and the US. So absolutely. I mean, this is something, again, it, it, it gives you the ability to know what's going on because for example, let's say, you know, you're working and uh, you call mom and mom doesn't answer. Well, unfortunately, because we're humans, we go to the worst possible result, right? We think, oh my gosh, mom is laying on the floor. Maybe, or more realistically, maybe mom's on the toilet. Maybe mom is, you know, doesn't have her hearing aids in. Maybe she just doesn't want to talk to you, whatever. <laughs> But the ability to pick up the app and see, well, all right, she didn't answer the phone, but she's fine. She's moving around. Everything's going on. Well, great. You know, now you can call her later or stop her or do whatever. But you can go on with your day, whatever that is, whether that's work or taking care of the kids or whatever. Getting on the Peloton. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have like a crystal ball thing? Like, where do you see this kind of technology going you know, for when you and I are, so you're four years younger <laughs> than me, maybe three, because I'm a late fall baby. Okay. Um, I graduated in 84, so. Um, yeah, I was 89. Right. It's 89, yeah. So where do you think this is going for people like us when we're in our 70s and 80s? Well, I'll tell you, it, it's very exciting. And what I mean by that is what we're doing right now is really step one. Because I'm a geek and, you know, I've got the skunk works in the back and I do all these cool things. What we're looking to do is really partner with Best of Breed to solve more problems. Because as we get older, you know, we, as I said, I'm not running as fast as I used to. <laughs> so as you get older, you need a little more help. And I look at it from a technology standpoint. Can I provide another tool? So for example, let's say, I don't like cameras inside the house. I think it's in invasive and nobody wants to be spied on. With that said, 
there are definite use cases. So for example, let's say mom has a touch of dementia. So what's the most important thing? Number one, did she walk out the front door, right? I need to know that right away. But number two, did she leave on the stove? Number three, did she not come back in? Well, partnering with Best of Breed, let's say a video doorbell. Now that scenario can happen. And let's say she walks out the front door and I give you an indication. I also indicate that the stove's on. If she doesn't walk back within three minutes or five minutes, now I send you a picture of what she was wearing when she left the house. Because when you call the emergency responders, the most important thing you need to know is when did she leave the house and what was she wearing? That's the kind of stuff that we're looking at in the future. And that's gonna be baked into our next generation, whether it's that, whether it's using better AI tools that are not only taking the habits, but then comparing them to known issues like from AOTA, occupational therapist, what they've seen. Uh, and maybe let's say mom gets up twice a night normally, but now she's getting up three or four times a night. What does that mean? Now, it might mean a urinary tract infection. Well, now we pair up with ChatGPT. Would you like to know what a urinary tract infection is? Click on this and it gives you all the information. So that's how, how we're leveraging all this technology to help us as humans really provide a solution to a problem today. That sounds cool. And I like the send you a picture of what they're wearing. We had a silver right. alert in my community. So there's 1,600 homes in this community. Okay. <clears throat> my husband emailed me. I guess he got a push notification from the local sheriff's department. It gave a description of the gentleman and the street right. he was last seen on, which part of it's down the hill from me about a mile, maybe less than okay. a mile. And so I knew like in the back of my head, I'm like, okay, I'm going to kind of keep an eye on, on the private Facebook pages that we have for our community and make sure like this gentleman is found. Right. Um, fortunately I haven't lived in this community too long, but they know me as the person that to call, <laughs> they can get a hold of me if they need help. So I'm like, okay, I was on alert knowing that this situation was going on. And mm. so I don't, I'll have to check. I'm assuming they were found. He was found, but you know, dinner called and <laughs> it's the end of right. the day. <laughs> and but, what would you know, make that even better is if you knew when he left the house and what was he wearing, right? Again, the more I, information or the more granularity that we can get, the better off it's going to be. Yeah. If they had been able to send with that alert, a photo of him, I might've jumped in the car with the girl dog right. and driven around to see him because you know, unfortunately, and this is one of the things the Alzheimer's Association is also trying to work on, is training for law enforcement um, on how to deal with people with dementia. Because right. if somebody calls up and says, there's this crazy man in my yard screaming and yelling, I don't, you know, and you show up and you, you, try, you tell them to, you know, obey this command and they don't, well, now you think you've got this non-compliant person Right. And you take severe, you know, not severe, but, you know, you take measures based on, hey, this person is, ir you know, irrational, acting crazy and not complying. Now you're on red alert as a police officer when this person is terrified because they have no idea what you're, why you're yelling at them to whatever, right. lay down on the ground or whatever. Right. So, yeah, if I, if they had sent a picture, I probably would have left the house and went looking for him just because it would have been really easy but yeah. as it was, there was just a basic general description, so. Well, and think of it like this, other things that we are uh, experimenting with in the background for our next release is how do we leverage voice? So in our world, I believe that for the caregiving community, voice and Alexa and all that stuff really hasn't been leveraged the right way. And what I mean by that is there's, there's two people that you're trying to help. There's the caregiver, right? So wouldn't it be nice to be able to go, uh, Alexa, how's mom doing? And all of a sudden she starts repeating, oh, mom's doing great. She got up at 7.30. She's gotten something to eat. She's currently sitting in the living room. Awesome. I mean, that's, that's a nice to have. It's not going to change the world, but that's a nice to have. Well, what if in mom's house, you would be able to have that voice system, but it could also pair up with what we're doing. So it would know that mom got up at whatever time. It would know that mom's now in the living room. And imagine if Alexa could be like, 
Hey, Mary. Good morning. How are you doing? Did you know that on this date in 1948, the top song was X? Would you like to hear that? Again, what we're learning from dementia is if we can bring cues in, positive cues from a time in the past, that puts them in a better state which then gives them a better chance of having a good day as opposed to a bad day. The other thing that we're learning is how can we use maybe voice prompts to kind of gauge where they are in the day? Are they happy? Would they like to hear that? Or did Mary just tell Alexa to go, you know, jump in the river, <laughs> <laughs> right? So again, how do we use these technologies that are around us to benefit, whether it's somebody with Alzheimer or whether it's somebody that, you know, uh, has other issues or, or whatever that is. And, and that's where you asked before, what do I see the future? I see the future as being exciting if we can use technology in the right way and not just be a gadget. That makes sense. And for people like us, you know, we're aging as well. You know, we didn't grow up with technology like the millennials and the, the Gen Z, but we've adopted it because we got it young enough in our adulthood that, right. you know, we just kind of grabbed onto the <laughs> train and kept going. <laughs> that is correct. I mean, do you, well, you probably didn't have them. We had <laughs> Commodore PET computers in my high school with cassette tape drives. I do remember Those were that. terrible. Yeah, oh. I do remember that. I, I remember the floppy drives, the five inch floppy, the three yep. and a half inch floppy. Yeah. Did you ever see the seven inch or were they seven or nine? I worked at an advertising agency in San Francisco when I was in college and they had some seriously old technology. It was like, I think, big was data remember them? Yes. But they had like the giant floppies. And I was like, they were like, I think they were nine inches because they were almost yeah. the size of a plate. Yeah. So, you know, technology, you know, so we're technology not going to come a long way <laughs> Yeah, for sure, but we're not going to be as technology adverse as yeah. say my 103 year old, my, my paternal grandmother lived to be 103. Wow. She died in 2021. Her husband died at the end of 97. So there was a very long period of time where she lived alone, right. which was not necessarily ideal. And I'm thinking, would she have liked that kind of thing? Hey, Esther on this date, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, maybe, but. Well, and that's a good question because what we've also learned is as we get older, right? We get a little slower. And, and we don't want to, you know, we don't want to, to, to bother anybody else. So we tend to self-isolate. And so that is the question. Would some kind of voice be an interesting companion? Would it be some kind of a robot? Would a robot be a good companion? Only time will tell. Yeah. So I tell people I intend to live as long as she did. That gives me just slightly less than 47 years to go. So... I'll get to what see all this exciting stuff. Next 47 years. That's a lot of Peloton. I got to tell you. <laughs> For real. <laughs> <laughs> if they're going to get to the point where they just grab you off the chair and go, nope, you didn't work out today because you had a 10 o'clock <laughs> recording and you're being a lazy bum and they <laughs> flop you on the bike. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I'm, I'm amazed at just that technology. So yeah. Um, why at some point, I don't know, I guess there'll be holographic instructors. So the instructor will be in the same room with you. Instead of on a screen. I guess that's where that'll go. We shall see. Shall that'll we? That'll be cool. Well, I have made sure that your website is linked in the show notes so people can just scroll down wherever they're listening and click on it. Check it out. Um, this definitely sounds better than cameras. My husband and I were talking. He asked me what we were talking about with the recording today, and I told him. And I said, I'm not really super fond of the idea of cameras in the house either. Right. And he said, should I take the one that's in the living room down? <laughs> So it's basically pointed at the entryway. Okay. So you can see um, all of the front door entryway and the dogs and the right. one dog that we have left is still, she lays there a lot. That's what she, she hangs out there a lot during the day. So it's, it's, it's good to have. And it's also, you know, beneficial because it's the front door, but we don't need right. cameras everywhere else. Exactly. exactly. You know, especially because he likes to use these kind of, he'll, he'll, he uses find my, my find my phone to okay. find out where, where I'm at. What am I doing? Like I, I enabled the um, messaging when I flew to DC uh -huh. and texted him. I'm like, hey, I enabled this before they closed the doors and pushed back from the gate. So now I can text you. I kind of woke up in the middle of a snooze. I'm like, where the hell am I? Because obviously it's dark and I'm you know, right. 30,000 feet in the air. And he's using 
um, a flight tracker app. And he's like, you're over such and such right now. <laughs> Isn't and it interesting? Like, All these things we didn't know before. <laughs> you know, and it's like, and did I, did I need to know I was over in Nebraska? No, but it was nice to know like, okay, I'm like about halfway there. Okay, cool. Right. I can go back to sleep now. <laughs> so it's just, it's interesting. He, he loves his technology. We had mm -hmm. to upgrade our routers and we had to buy three of them because of the size of the house. And he's like, well, there's option A, which gives you up to X amount of um, internet connected devices or option B. And I laughed. Okay, I'm, I am super frugal. I would have gone with option A, the cheaper version. But I'm right. like, dude, every time you turn around, you're getting another internet connected device. You got to go with the most expensive version. <laughs> get the best that you can afford. <laughs> and that's what we did. So, and then yeah. we get a air filter, air purifier <laughs> that's internet connected. So, yeah, <laughs> all of I these things you. are supposed to make our lives easier. Well, well wait until like, you see the bathroom of the future because, you know, we, we talk about smart kitchens and, it, you know, everything in the kitchen is smart now, whether it's your refrigerator, whether it's the new stove. I, I really challenge you to buy a stove that doesn't have some kind of smartness to it. And now microwaves, we talked about microwaves, but wait until the bathroom is as smart as the kitchen. I mean, literally where the toilet is analyzing the data coming out of you. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Well, that's, that's... here now. <laughs> Actually, I just saw two different things in CES. Uh, one is called Withlings, where it analyzes um, pee. But it's really interesting because it, it's analyzing it in real time. And there's so many things you can learn from it. And then there's another one that analyzes you when you sit down on the toilet. And uh, it's it's trying to figure out if it's if you're stressed out on the toilet. So think of it kind of like an Apple Watch, but just sensing your butt. We'll see. We'll see uh, how stressed you out you are on the toilet. I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, my gosh. Well, the bathrooms are 1988 also. And the step up over the lip of the shower is actually even my husband's 6'3". <clears throat> it's a little high and the the f why the hell we have slick tile on the floor of the shower is a question you know you rinse the conditioner off your hair and now you've got like Ooh. a very hazardous <laughs> thankfully the people who built this house were older so there are some very atrocious grab bars <laughs> in the shower <laughs> but That's it does make it easier to get out and carefully navigate up over the six inch lip and not slip on the slippery tile <laughs> floor True. so yeah that's we got the kitchen to do and two and a half bathrooms although the primary bathroom is it's it's gonna be a race to see which one kitchen or bathroom gets done first and the designer lady said the bathroom would actually cost more money oh than great the kitchen. so You're yeah the kitchen. i was like <laughs> well since my stove is designed for a left-handed person of which i am not i'm i'm game for the kitchen too so there you go. We'll see. I think that's but now, great. now I'm all curious because he's got a specific Thermidor range picked out, and I would like to see how much smartness it's got attached to it. Are you sure? Shall you too shall see, right? <laughs> it'll it'll get know. us. We'll get the smartest stove that fits within what he wants. So he wants a certain size, a certain brand. Right. I'm trying to nudge him to the um, induction away from gas. Yeah, induction so we'll see. is very interesting. I, I really do like that technology. I think it's actually a smart technology for any, well, for all homes, but yeah. especially if you have young children or older people. Like I have to lean over the stove to grab the utensils or the right. butter dish. And I'm five foot two. So, you know, I end up with like a little Miss Doubtfire issue if I'm not <laughs> careful. <laughs> oh, I need boy. a slight step up just to prevent my front half from being too close to the gas burner. Right. And so that would not be a problem with induction. I would not toast my chest. Right, right. That's the it value seems, of that. Yeah, it just seems logical. And we yeah. we either run on electricity or propane. So um, the okay. heat is propane and the stove is propane. Everything else is electric. So, makes you know, sense. it just kind of makes sense to me to get away from the propane gas. I don't know. But this has been fascinating. It sounds like we could talk technology for another hour. <laughs> I got a whole bunch of tech I can talk to you about. So, you know, we can we can do another uh, podcast just talking about technology for living in place, like what's out there, how it can help people. There, there is a lot of cool stuff. Well, let's do, I'll plan for that. I'll make a note on my calendar to 
circle back with you and, and talk about technology for aging in place because our population is definitely aging and nobody admits to wanting to move to assisted living. Yeah, that's true. We plan on it because I'm, I've been around this block enough times to know that, you know, at a certain point in your life, having to cook and clean and manage the yard. And, mm. you know, we had, um, True. my husband, we went and he went into our utility room and it was, it had water all over the floor, which is where our spare flooring for the kitchen is. And so, you know, plumber had to be called, you know, this is all those things you got to deal with. And I don't think I want to do that in 20, 20 years. Not in your golden years, right? No, it's like at some point somebody else could take care of all that crap. <laughs> so that's, that's my soapbox. It's like, don't look at assisted living as like a place you go to wait to die. It's like, that's a place, it's like living in a dorm. Right. You know, you're, you got independence, but somebody else is taking care of a lot of the BS, so. And socialization, right? Because there's a bunch of people there. That is true. And you could talk to them or not. You could do whatever. Yeah, I, I see a lot of benefits. They just need to bring down the cost and give yeah. us more options. Sounds so, good. But this has been great. I'm looking forward to our, our conversation in the future on technology for aging in place. Sounds good. Thank you. I really appreciate that you had me on. You're welcome. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your podcasts.